What do we come up with here? 16 times 4, 64 divided by that, 64. You don't need to show me. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. You guys can all figure that out. I don't need to see a million steps of arithmetic. Once you've, If you're doing any kind of a problem, once you've written out you know, how you're calculating it with values, put the, put the answer after that. You don't need to show a million steps once you've done that. It would be a good idea to show substituting the values in, but you don't have to say this is 64 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is 64 over 2. I mean, grade 8, you need to do that. But here, we're more interested in the calculus part of it. You can just say that is 32. What would the units be? Feet per second. All right. That's the average over the first two seconds. If you want the instantaneous speed, how is it going to compare to that? If we look back at this graph here, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be higher for sure. So let me put this in the right place here. That's two, which so so the height of that point is 64 here, right? What we calculated before. Again, a big a big uh, thing to remember in this course is you should you should use graphs and algebra and and maybe tables like put all those things together to try and understand a situation. If you connect what you see in this graph with what you did algebraically a minute ago, you, you gain a lot of understanding uh, of what's going on. Uh, if we want the average speed at that point, it's higher, right? It is higher. You could maybe estimate from the graph just by looking at this. I don't know. From one to three and a half seconds, so two and a half seconds go by. And how far is it traveling? 160. All right? You could divide that and figure out what it is. But we're gonna we're gonna look for a better way here. That that would be a way to graphically just come up with what it is to draw the picture, draw a nice accurate tangent line, and figure it out that way. What we're gonna do? Oops, now I need to get this one. What we are gonna do is, if you and this is a huge concept here for what the slope of the tangent line. You can get the slope of the tangent line if you write an expression for the slope of the secant line, which is what we just did, right? We wrote an expression for the slope of the secant line. And then push this closer and closer. What happens as I push this closer and closer? It gets bigger, absolutely. It's starting to get closer to the tangent, matching up with that. The closer I put these together, the more closely the green one approximates the red one. All right, so if I put them, like if I wanted to measure what the slope is at 2, I could just take the average between two points really close together. As soon as I get closer, it snaps to that point. But if you put the lines really close together, they're almost, the, if you put those two points really close together, they're almost the same, right? So that's, that's a pretty big fundamental understanding. First of all, before we start writing the expressions and the algebra, understanding that what we're going to do is we're going to write an expression for the slope of a secant line, as in the average slope. And then we're going to look at what happens as you make that closer and closer together. All right. We're actually going to put it on this. We're going to actually come from the other side. It doesn't matter which side we come from, but I'm going to put this up here. Uh, let's move all these down here because I want to copy this picture. So there's, there's that. Let's pretend those are the same. And then this is up here. All right. Um, now, I'm getting ahead of myself here because I'm saying solve this numerically. Um, on your calculator, you can make a table. Don't make a table by hand. Okay? If we want to find this, uh, we need to, what we're going to look at is that expression we had, f of x2 minus f of x1, right? Over x2 minus x1. Except I don't want to talk about x2 and x1. So what we're going to use is we're going to use some different notation here. We need to picture that other graph. Okay, so we got this picture here. If you don't have the graph drawn somewhere, it might be a good idea to draw a little sketch of it somewhere. This is way too big of a sketch. Oh, come on. Okay, so take this. Oh. Make it a bit smaller. Now we're going to call this, what we just said, you know, grade 10, if you're calculating the slope of this, you'd call this x2, y2, right, or something like that, and this would be x1, y1, and the slope is just the subtracting the two, right? Instead, what we're going to call it, because we don't want to have two different x values, 
we're going to call this x, and we're going to call this x plus something, okay? This is x plus something. I'm going to call this something h. Those are the x values. This is, this is f of x, and then what's this one up here called? f of x plus h. The h is just the difference between the two. Okay, We're going to use the h to represent the difference between the two. h okay, is the difference between the x values. Okay, so we need this. The, re, the reason then is because we can put it in the calculator with only a single variable here. If I want the if I want the average speed at two, my starting x value should be two, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna come from the right side here. Let me uh, re replay this here for you. So what we want to do is put if we want the if we want the slope at two. So I want to know what the slope is right there. I'm going to put one of the points on that value, and then I'm going to make this one closer and closer to, to it. So my x value is going to be 2, and my other x value is going to be 2 plus h, a little bit. Okay? 2 and 2 plus h. So let's write that expression here. The expression for the slope... Okay, slope of secant line. Are we okay if I just use the word secant line? It means the line between two points. Slope of the secant line. Better do it down here. I'm sure you can fit it in. I can't. We need to write this the slope expression for that. Remember, it's y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Or in other words, it's f of, what is this called up here again? What's the, what's the right-hand f value? f of x plus h, right? So we've got f of x plus h minus f of x. That's the difference in the y values. And then what's the difference in the uh, x values? x plus h is the right-hand one minus x. Yeah, you could actually simplify the bottom. Notice that, I mean, the bottom is we want the difference between the x values. That's what we're calling h, right? So on the bottom, it could just say h. So you have f of x plus h minus f of x. In our case, what's our x that we're starting with? Like, where are we putting the one of the points? 2, right? Because we want, we want the value at 2. So in this situation, in this situation, we want to put a 2 there. Okay, in this situation, x is 2. So because we want, we want this curve, we want 2, and then 2 plus h here, right? 2 plus h. And we're looking for the slope between those two as we push one close together there. So in this situation, we have uh, 2 plus h. And what's the actual function? Instead of putting, I better write this, and then we'll make sense of it. f of 2 over h. What's the actual function in this situation? 16 times something squared, right? The actual function is 16 times 2 plus h squared minus 16 times 2 squared over h. I don't want us to go through and calculate that by uh, by hand a whole bunch of times. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the calculator and then look what happens as we make h smaller and smaller. h, again, is the difference between the two. If I make h smaller and smaller, what's it doing with the two points? Pushing them closer together, and then we're getting a more accurate value. Oh, he missed it this time. 